Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and recently Flutter announced that now you can make Windows, yes native Windows app using Flutter, which is absolutely cool. I was pretty much excited that yeah, one more capability in the framework and the framework in itself is getting more defined and uh, more polished. I love that thing. So obviously the next step was to, hey, let's give it a try and see what are all the issues that one faces while building an app using Flutter on Windows. So I tried exactly the same. And yes, by the way, everybody is excited about because now you can make Windows app using Flutter. So that's an exciting news, obviously. But I was not excited for this one. Obviously, I was excited, but not that much. I was excited something which Flutter has kind of a silently done for the Android apps. And boy, oh boy, I love this update. This is my favorite one, even much more favorite than building the Windows app. I'll talk about that in the later half of the video. First, let's jump right into the laptop and talk about how we can make a Windows app and who can actually make them. So moving on, I fired up my uh, simple terminal and I simply first and foremost, you have to actually run Flutter upgrade to make sure that all of the latest update are being fetched into your system. And in case your Flutter is not even installed, oh boy, that's a different talk we need to put into a separate video. Right now, we're not gonna discuss that. So once you have done that, then let me also tell you one simple trick and kind of a advice that I want to give to all of you. So whenever you create a new project, you either run or fire a new project using the VS Code itself. I prefer to do it from the terminal itself. And I'll tell you the reason for that. The usual thing is Flutter create and then you simply name that. For example, I want to have a Win test or for Windows test. But this is okay. But what I would recommend you to do is also pass on a flag. And that is simply dash dash org. And once you have this dot org flag, you can simply say dot in, uh, let's just say learn code online, whatever your domain name is, you need to reverse that. Now, obviously you can later go ahead and inject all these naming conventions and your package name later on as well. But if you're planning to release your app, especially in Flutter in the production, then this one flag is going to save you a ton of time. Okay. Now first, let me go on to a, a folder or where we can actually have all of this one. So let's go up here. I'll be moving on to my desktop and on the desktop, then let's go ahead and simply say, hey, Flutter, uh, create, and I'll be passing my flag because I have made it a, as a habit so that whenever I move my apps into production, I don't have to go into tons of different files and place this naming and the package name all over again. Also, if you're planning to inject Firebase, this flag is going to just save you a whole lot of time. So my website name is Learn Code Online. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, pass on into the rever reverse domain order. So there we go. And let's call this one as win test. And I'm going to go ahead and just run this one. Okay, let's wait just a couple of seconds because it's a pretty fast process to deploy that. Let's go into this win test. And I'm going to fire up my code editor just like that, just like we always do that. Okay. Yes, of course, I trust that. And now what you're going to notice here is that now you have a new folder which says Windows, pretty exciting. If you'll open this up, there is a directory with the runner. So you can see all the CMake file and the CPP file. Now, one thing you should deduce here that is that obviously they are taking a whole lot of advantage of C++. So C++ should be installed in your system. And especially no matter what tool chain of C++ you are using, but at least one should be installed because they are taking full advantage of that. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Okay. Now, interestingly, on my system, if I go ahead and open up my terminal, and let's open this up, move it up at the top. If you notice here, if I go ahead and say Flutter devices, I am obviously not going to see Windows because it is not a Windows device at all. So right now I have just Chrome, which is connected. So obviously I'm not on Windows. So if I go ahead and even try and say, hey, I am trying to run Flutter on Windows, since this device is not available, it's going to say, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. What is Windows? So obviously this is not going to run there. So Flutter has moved on to a position now where I can write apps for Windows, but I cannot test them because I don't have access to Windows API in my system. Similarly, Windows users can write apps that can run on the iOS, but cannot test them because they don't have access to the iOS APIs. So obviously I wanted to test this up. So what I did, I fired up a Windows laptop and see that how it actually works. So I got my old Windows laptop and thought that, hey, let's install Flutter in that and let's see how cool the Flutter app looks into a Windows system. So if Flutter is installed into a Windows system, there is one still additional thing that you have to do, which is not mentioned anywhere. You need to install Visual Studio Community Edition. No, I'm not talking about Visual Studio Code, the code editor that we use. 
I'm talking about the Visual Studio provided by Microsoft. Now, there are definitely other ways of doing the task that we want to do with this Visual Studio. It's all about installing the C++ tool chain. This is the easiest way to have C++ onto your system. But in case C++ is already installed and properly configured along with the tool chain, you don't need to do this additional step. I had to do it. So after installing the C++, I again did the same steps just I did in my Mac as well. Flutter simply created a project and I tried to run that by checking, of course, after that, how many devices are available. Once I saw the device windows is available, I fired it up and voila, it run just like a regular app. Now, another question that comes up is that now, since we are able to make apps for Windows as well, sometimes there are chances that you might want to specifically target Windows operating system as to give a pretty much native feel of the Windows app. Now, obviously, there are some of the UI that will come in the future as well. Right now, what we have is the Fluent UI, which is kind of an officially way of making Windows app looks more like Windowish. Now, here comes a big shout out to the publisher who have given a whole lot of effort in making sure that we have some kind of UI library, which helps us to make Windows app look more like Windowish. Now, if we'll come up here and look into the Fluent UI, you're going to notice that a whole lot of things are into the to-do mode. So obviously, it's a really task that he's doing. But I think there should be something officially from the Flutter guys that, hey, this is official library given by us, that now you can use that and make Windows app. I wish that would be there. It would be much more awesome. Okay, so now that the big headline is covered that we can now create the Windows app in the Flutter. Now let me walk you through with a couple of minor updates. Some of them are not so interesting, but some of them are really interesting. So we have already covered this app. There are some performance issues that are being improved. So we have a dirty region, all of that. I'm not sure you might be interested in that part as of now. iOS also don't get any much of an enhanced experience or new widgets or nothing like that. They just have now smoother keyboard animation and a bit here and there, so nothing too much interesting. What is interesting for me is actually into the Android updates. So we all know, for all of you also might be working into the building Android apps using Flutter, you know that sometimes when you install Firebase or any kind of a big library, it is a nightmare. You have to enable the multi deck support and all of that. Now we have done this so many times as a regular Flutter developer that we don't see it now. But for a new beginner, it is still a big pain that we have to enable the multi deck support and import the libraries into the official Android. I'm not a big fan of it. And teaching a new beginner that how to do that, again, it's a nightmare all, on all of that. So I literally am a fan of this line where, when they say that also in this release, we have enabled the multi deck support automatically. Thank goodness. Thank you so much, Flutter team, that you have done this automatically. This is going to save so much hours of our time to teach students and the beginners in the Flutter that you don't have to do this now. Now, obviously, don't forget that you have to pass on this dash dash multi dex flag in order to make sure that you, whenever you are running the Flutter build command and all of that. So you have to do this, so don't you worry on that. Just pass the flag and forget all about it. Not only that, now you also get better error messages into the Flutter fix that, hey, you have to use the minimum SDK version this, you have to go here and change this. Really a big fan that how you have done this one. This is by far my biggest and my most favorite update in the Flutter recent version. And apart from that, Web also got a minor update into the text field. And there is a big update into the Material 3 design that now you can have this seeding kind of a thing into the colors. I think this deserves a separate video in itself from somebody who has much more expertise into the design and especially the latest Android updates, how they are picking up the colors and one seed color can design the entire theme of the phone and all of that. So this is all related to that. But I think I have given you enough of the gist about what's happening in the latest Flutter thing. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe and uh, let's catch up in the next video. Yeah. Somos felices a distancia, ya no aguanto tu frac.